I'm gonna beat Minecraft in 100 days without breaking any blocks, without killing any mobs, and using only this. Believe me, it's possible. This is obviously inspired by Ryan Tran's series, so because of that, every subscriber on this video is one penny to feeding America. So subscribe for a good cause, and also because I have more amazing videos coming very soon. And while I spawn in the world and start walking in a random direction, let's talk about those rules. Rule number one, I can't break any blocks that I'm not responsible for. So unless I made it, I can't use it. Rule number two, no killing anything. So I need to find a way to beat the game without killing a single mob, including the dragon. Rule number three, no stealing, cause stealing is wrong. <laughs> so everything I'm gonna use in this world is gonna come from this emerald and I'm in hardcore mode, which means I can starve to death. And I only have one emerald and I don't wanna waste it on food. So I have to walk, no jumping, no sprinting, no swimming, being very careful and deliberate with all of my movements. I made my way into a desert biome, which was actually one of the ones that I was looking for for reasons you'll see in a little bit. Soon into walking this way, I found a village on the water which would be an absolute amazing find. You see, desert villages can have crafting tables and furnaces, two things I'm gonna need very early on to succeed, including these sticks I found on the ground, my first item in this world. But I was really here for one reason. My friend, I'm very sorry, but I'm gonna have to borrow a good portion of your house. Yep, that's what I thought. It's even green like my emerald. No, get out. After borrowing their bed, it was time to explore the village a little bit more. There was nothing else immediately useful here, but I saw another tower in the distance. Walking over, I saw that it was actually an abandoned village. These are super rare and an easy way to find some rotten flesh right away. There's a few zombies trapped in the walls, in the ceiling. Hey buddy. How you doing? You okay? Yeah, I know, it's an emerald, it's, it's green, just like you. But some rabbit hide was sitting around, and this is another reason I wanted to be in a desert. You see, since I can't kill anything, and I can't break any blocks, I need to be creative with how I'm finding food. And cats that spawn in villages hunt rabbits that spawn in deserts. So this is why I wanted to be here. With a little bit of raw rabbit in hand, I chased and corralled a few more over into corners, trying to get cats in that direction too, sleeping in the abandoned village inside day three. Now, this whole gameplay is gonna be a little bit slower. You need to prepare yourself. This is a look at Minecraft in its most basic form, as a true adventure, not as a sandbox. Arming myself with only food that I can get from cats that have hunted, I stayed up late into the night this day, getting an arrow and some bones from a skeleton that had been killed, and realizing that golems don't hunt creepers, so I'm gonna have to just run. I also picked up a little bit of string, but cheering the golems on right now is my path to victory. Yes, that's right. Get them. I will just pick this up. I don't think they have a cleric. Yes, come and be murdered by my friend over here. Using myself as bait is proving pretty effective. This food will keep me from starving to death. I just need to be very careful to not take any hits as any bit of damage. Oh no, I'm taking a ton of hits. The next morning, once the leftover zombies and husks had been cleared by the golems as they tried to come in and murderificate the whole town, I ended up eating some zombie flesh, just getting back up to full, standing perfectly still while the hunger effect was in play so it wouldn't negatively affect my food levels. As I started exploring what was available outside and around this village, I found an egg sitting on the ground, which would be useful until I remember like in 20 days that I can't actually kill chickens. Found my way through a savanna biome into a savanna village, which was another important one and it had some critical blocks that I could use except this one was split by a river right down the middle and all of the villagers ended up getting stuck in the water I couldn't really do anything about it. I hung around this village for a little while since they had a brand new fresh golem picking up any mob drops that were around getting eventually seeing some seeds sitting on the ground from a block of water that had updated in a kind of cursed state. Savannah villagers are notorious for this, so this came in pretty clutch. Day five and the start of this challenge is pretty clear. This is gonna be a slow burn. The highlight of my day was watching the cats on the hunt. Okay, bunny, I'm very sorry, but you're going. Cat, do your job. As it went into the night and the golems were protecting me from husks, I realized creepers could be useful for something. If I could get one more stick, I could make a fishing rod, and that would be huge. 
As one creeper blew up, I did get a little bit of sand and sandstone, which is gonna come in handy later, but no sticks. And eventually I saw some iron and a poppy sitting on the ground, meaning the spider jockey right there had killed them. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not happy to see them dead, but I am happy to have four iron even though I can't really use it for anything right now. I did see a witch, and sticks are one of their most common drops, so if I get the golem to kill the witch, I'll probably be able to make a fishing rod and feed myself, but instead they dropped glass bottles. I mean, it fits the recycling theme for sure, and just a little bit after that, I was able to get one creeper to blow up another for a piece of gunpowder. That is definitely gonna come in handy. Day number six, and I'm waiting for one of two things to happen. Either a stick needs to spawn, or something else which is key to this strategy. So I followed the cats during the day and the golems during the night, getting drops from both of their prey, but one thing was quite elusive. Witch, oh, it desp I just saw a witch for like a half a second. Following on through an unsuccessful hunt of a night, I was into day seven, picking up any of the scraps that were sitting around and just taking stock of what little I had in my inventory. Normally by now I'm in at least full iron armor. I'm in making progress on a base or some sort of place of operations. And no, I'm just standing in the desert, doing my thing, talking with the villagers who won't sell anything to me. Now I only have two sticks and this is a huge investment. I made myself an iron hoe, hoeing the grass that was right here in the village and using all of the bones into bone meal to convert a lot of that into wheat and more seeds, which could be used for more trading. After full sending it with all of the seeds in my inventory and about half of the bone meal that I had, I was able to trade and double my emerald supply. This was a huge first step, but now instead of one stick, I needed three. All right, buddy, you and me, we're gonna find a witch and kill them. This is the plan for tonight. And then this run can actually kick off. I'm two hours in. I let that golem out and into battle and they fought valiantly. They killed a ton of different mobs, getting me some basic trash drops, but eventually they fell. I picked up the iron so it wouldn't go in vain and then had some creepers help me out. Okay, the creeper made sticks. Try to do this again, right here. Please, oh, that's two. Why is it always two? On the morning of day eight, as I was busy cleaning up the trash around this village, somebody's got to do that job. We had a special visitor. Wandering trader. Please be something good. Five emeralds for spruce sapling. Pumpkin seeds. That spruce sapling is the only way I'm actually gonna succeed at this challenge. And I need to double and more my emeralds to get it. I invested all of the bone meal I had into wheat, but it wasn't gonna be enough. I did have a few cactuses though, and while I'm not killing anything, I'm not saving the llamas, even though karma got me there. Oh, it broke the, oh no. It broke the lead. I was a lot more careful with the second one, picking up a lead, which is huge for the playthrough. Being able to guide animals is a must. But I found a few more bones, converting that to bone meal, to wheat, and to my third emerald. I'm 60% of the way there. And I started day nine with an explosive bit of progress. That's a stick. Please tell me that that didn't delete the stick from the first explosion. <gasps> yes! Okay, we can finally make progress now. Yep, that's me, excited about a stick. Deeply excited about a stick. Because there's one other way we can get to success, and that is this fishing rod. But to get this to really work, I need to leave the desert, head south, and travel back towards one of the jungle biomes that I had seen earlier in my adventure. And this will only work here, and it's actually kind of wonderful that it's raining. You see, when fishing, you can either get a fish, a piece of treasure, or a piece of junk. And I'm specifically looking for one specific piece of junk, a single piece of bamboo. While the fish is definitely good, it's a renewable food source and something that I can use to keep myself alive, that one green shoot is my absolute most treasured possession right now. If only I can get it. And if I can get it, I don't even need to worry about the sapling, even though that'll definitely be useful. 
After sleeping in the Plains Village on day 10, I traveled around seeing that they had a cleric as well, which could really come in handy. It's one of the few times I'm excited to see these churches. The only problem was they had a small hole. Luckily, I had two blocks of sand to enable it so that somebody could learn. Yes! That's four emeralds! We're up to four emeralds! If we get one more, we can go back and buy the spruce from the wandering trader. With my emeralds once again doubled, the only thing I can do right now is hope for night that I can get enough rotten flesh before the wandering trader despawns back at the desert village, setting me back massively by at least another hour before one could potentially appear. Bowl. Can I do anything with the bowl? I don't know if I can do anything with the bowl, but I have a bowl now. Fishing proved a bit of a mixed bag, and as soon as it was dark enough for mobs to spawn, I immediately ran back to the plains village, just hanging out behind the iron golem, doing my duty as a member of this town to just pick up any trash that happened to be laying on the ground, because one person's trash is one cleric's treasure. On day 11, 24 rotten flesh is not enough to trade, so we're gonna have to go back to fishing and do more zombie hunting with our golem friend later tonight. Now, catch is here were kind of a mixed bag. I did end up getting a tripwire hook, which could come in handy if I want to build a trapped chest for any reason. Maybe a crossbow, but I can't kill anything. I did get a ton of fish, which is going to be super useful, both for taming cats, as well as getting a lot more food for myself and for said cats. As it started going over to the evening, I had two great catches back to back. Are you kidding me? I get a name tag before I get bamboo. That is <laughs> legitimately wild. Bamboo, this one. Please. Seriously? <gasps> oh my god, that's huge! <laughs> that is such a big come up. That is, that is genuinely massive. What was that? It's another cod. All right, last cast on this tag. It's going to break when I pull it. You've served me well, fishing rod. You've done your greatest. You've brought me a, a better version of yourself. But now it's your time to go. Please give me bamboo. Cod. With my original fishing rod broken, but a replacement in my inventory, I headed back over to the Plains Village to watch the golem do their work, getting into the morning and our next big step. Yes! That is the most excited anyone has ever been to collect rotten flesh. Hello. Yes, that is five emeralds. Okay, we have to get back to the desert village as fast as possible. With enough emeralds in my inventory, I immediately ran back to the village. And my only hope right now is that the time that the wandering trader spent in unloaded chunks did not count towards its despawn timer and that it would be there when I got there. I see them and I'm going to run. I have the fish, I can afford to run. Do not disappear. As long as I'm looking at you, you are legally not allowed to disappear. It's about to be storming. Oh! <laughs> oh, that is massive. You are my path to completing this game. Using some bones into bone meal, I converted that sapling into a full tree, punching it down and getting my very first spruce wood and a whole host of new unlocks from there. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, there's four. We can craft a big one. We can get more. Five saplings is a huge profit. I made myself a boat to make water travel a little bit easier. Finding an ink sack just sitting on the ground. If I want to dye anything, this will come in handy. The next thing I need now is coal or charcoal. And I don't have any stone, so I'm going to need a furnace. Headed over to the Savannah Village, thinking that I had seen one there. Knowing that I had seen a furnace somewhere, but not remembering. The Savannah Village was a strikeout, so that boat came in clutch, sailing all the way down the river, making my way all the way to the Plains Village. They didn't have any furnace, and they did have a Fletcher. Fortunately, that Fletcher did not have a stick trade, which was 
pretty devastating. I was counting on that. The next day, I'm trying to convince the Fletcher to reset on their trades somehow. My first thought was if I could find and isolate the Fletching table, maybe they would lose their job association, but they don't actually need line of sight for getting a job, just restocking, so that doesn't work. So we're gonna have to find another village with another Fletcher, and oh boy, this is gonna be a lot of travel to try to earn any emeralds at all. I found some kelp on the ocean as I was sailing, going for almost the full day, finding my way to another Savannah village a little bit later in the afternoon. They had most of what I needed, a crafting table and an armorer who could help keep me alive. The next morning, I'm talking with all the villagers and then I found something useful. So that won't work, but that will. And I kinda wanna eat. <laughs> I wanna eat some cooked food. Actually, wait. If we can get nine, oh, this might be the play. If we can get nine of those, we can cook the rest of them. This is absolutely the play. If we can get one kelp block, that cooks more than a kelp block's worth of kelp. Being able to convert kelp into dried kelp and getting 22 kelp cooked from one kelp block of nine is a net positive loop as long as you keep growing kelp. And I made sure to save some aside. I invested one of my precious few iron ingots into making a shield, heading down into the large cavern right next to the village to have a creeper help me find a little bit of cobblestone. It wasn't enough though, and I still had more that I needed to do. So I sailed off, making a wrong turn initially, heading off towards another village, which was sad and boring and had nothing of value in it, sailing all the way back, which took the entire day. Literally, this is at 20x speed, making my way through several different islands and making Making my way through several islands and eventually giving up on the night at the Plains Village, sleeping there and continuing my trek from there northward up through the water channel back towards my desert home. I made myself a wooden hoe, which would come in handy, planting the one melon seed that I had found on the ground at one of the previous savannah villages to be able to start growing melons as well. I also made some quick fences and started getting some friends. <laughs> First try. Hello, friend. Great job. You're gonna you're gonna make me well, you you might not survive. I spawned and tortured these chickens for the entire hundred days, and I forgot that I couldn't kill them, so yeah, they just kind of sat in the pen for forever. That day ended with a little bit of tree chopping, which is something you're gonna see quite a bit of, and a quick nap. Going into day 18, I started exploring in another direction. Having no ability to modify the world, is making me really venture out very cautiously and carefully, just trying to find new things that are useful without having to worry about heading too far. I sailed as far as I could, wandering into yet another desert village and just talking with everybody to seeing if anybody had meaningfully useful trades. By the time I had cleared the village, it was day 19 and I continued sailing, making my way towards another area, finding more villages, visiting for any of them, and then moving on to the next. I'm also trying to identify a taiga biome where wolves can spawn and I found one, but no future pets. On the way back, I did give a creeper a quick hug to get a few more pieces of cobblestone so I'd be able to craft a furnace, but it's late and I am almost out of food and almost about to die, so I just fished while standing on the boat going into day 20. And the time going by is really putting this whole world into perspective for me. Makes me realize how lucky we are to have no restrictions on our creativity unless we put them there ourselves. I was able to make a quick furnace on day 20, and I was so excited about it. Smelting up one of the logs into a piece of charcoal. I planted all of the kelp as well, and now that I had enough spruce saplings and some dirt from several creeper explosions, planted enough saplings to get myself a big tree, and invested three more iron into a bucket so I could carry around a bucket of water to avoid, you know, dying to fall damage. Oh, the first melon. Yes, new item unlocked. That evening, the very first melon grew, meaning my operation could continue to scale up going into day 21, where I'm harvesting all of the wheat, standing out in the rain, and I am kind of matching the mood of this weather. I need to get a Fletcher who will accept stick trades. Wheat is useful, but it is slow, and it will not get me enough emeralds fast enough to beat this game in the time that I have. So I spent the day finding a gravel beach and a nether portal just a little ways off. I have one bucket and I don't normally cast my portals, I normally build them. So I spent a little bit of practice and well, uh, 
it didn't go well. <laughs> Wish I could see the sunset <laughs> over that direction. But playing this game a little bit differently, taking it slow, being in no armor, being excited about having, you know, a furnace on day 21, honestly makes me just kind of appreciate this game a little differently. This has been fun. Once it was dark enough to spawn mobs, a couple creepers were more than happy to go exploding around me, trying to damage me, but instead handing me gravel, which would be extremely important to me being able to, you know, do this challenge. By the time I had sailed home, the large tree had grown, but mobs were a little too prevalent, so I took a quick nap going to harvest that tree down in the morning instead, something that I did dozens upon dozens of time. I crafted up my first fletching table, my first friend having a stick trade, and got to work. Oh my goodness, let's go. We have 16 emeralds. We are so rich all of a sudden. Oh my God, that's amazing. Oh, well, we need more wood. Well, look at that. <laughs> 16 emeralds, 16 times what I had started in this world with, and I actually had a viable form of being able to make money in this world. This is where the challenge really starts to ramp up and kick off quickly. I did more trading for emeralds throughout the entire day, being absolutely flush with the stuff by the time it was evening and the villagers were starting to call it the night, but I wasn't done yet. The crops were able to be harvested about every day or two, and after a couple, I was able to throw just one more emerald in and end the day just short of half a stack. Having started this day at zero, that feels amazing. And here's where the challenge turns kind of into daily chores the game. I chopped hundreds of logs, bone mealed hundreds of seeds up into wheat and traded all of that into this village's economy, single-handedly becoming just a huge source of raw materials and resources. And I never saw them put a single block down. That one is kind of weird. I'm crafting up wooden axes to try to make it move just a little bit faster, throwing any string that I had in towards the villagers pockets as well to get them leveled up. But as the IRL clock ticked over midnight, I restarted my game for a little festive treat. It's Christmas Eve. So I restarted my game so we'd have Christmas present chests. I really wanted them. I got so excited. Look at it. It's adorable. Day 24 and it's Christmas. I got one of the Fletchers up to their expert level trade, even though I'm still primarily only using the first one, saving an iron golem from being stuck in the water and taking the carcass of one of their fallen friends to make myself a smithing table. Okay, this is an investment. What a worthwhile one. Let's make a pickaxe, which we will need. Okay. <laughs> and then... Every single one of those will be valuable at some point in the future. Just not right now. Now I can make a toolsmith, which means I can make stone axes, but is a massive improvement over just breaking these logs by hand. And if I can level this toolsmith all the way up to their max level, I'm practically guaranteed to get a full set of diamond tools. So my income right now comes from logging and farming, throwing sticks and wheat at the villagers for whatever they'll take. My only expense in the world is axes, which help me do my job a little bit faster, and they're not making me pay rent. I've basically moved in and taking over the whole place. But it was near the end of this day that I finally cracked a full stack of emeralds and then some, 66 in my pocket, and we're only a quarter of the way through this thing. I think it's doable. The morning of day 25, my main money makers were conspiring, which would make me think a little bit about market manipulation. Maybe I'm the one getting scammed. I spent the day doing all of my chores and my Fletcher is approaching that master level. If I could get a cool arrow, that would be nice, even though I can never use it. But while I was doing a little bit of fishing, the one villager who's of no use to me was just getting up in my business. Stop following me around. I'm not interested in talking with you. You literally can do nothing to help this challenge. I'm sorry. I spent a good portion of the day fishing before realizing that that fishing rod is not the only way I can do it. The other way is just a little more gruesome. Oh, this is so gruesome. I didn't think about 
the fact that this is actually kind of sad. <laughs> oh no! Oh, drop bone meal too. Okay, that's super useful. Okay, where's the cat? Yeah, we're never doing that again. But with a bunch of fish in my pocket, I ran off towards the abandoned village, thinking that if I could get one of the cats tamed, they could be giving me gifts each night when I would sleep, which would be a new source of additional items. And some of the things that they drop are really potentially useful. Also, I didn't even realize there was a smelter right here the whole time. I didn't need to struggle for that long to get cobblestone. Okay, cat, we're gonna try the whole gifts. We're gonna try gifts. Oh, it sleeps on my lap. And it gave me the rabbit hide. Perfect. Getting some rabbit hides and some rotten flesh from the zombies that were in that village is definitely useful. I got my third melon shoot all the way grown up, being able to grow additional melons. I will need those for when my farmer hits higher levels. I planted a lot of the cactus, thinking that eventually if I make a composter, I could turn this into bone meal. Cactus is a pretty efficient source for that. Spending a lot of time doing logging and trading all of those sticks in, getting my Fletcher to master, and getting jump boost arrows. Not even worth shooting myself with, really. But after trading so many axes, the toolsmith is at a point where I'm not sure what to do with them, and the golem is trapped inside one of the main stands in the village. That's... So I just fished to decompress and figure out what I'm going to do with each of those problems in the morning. And I thought about that and handled it by leaving, taking a tour through all of the different savannah villagers for an armorer who would be able to get me iron armor so I'd be able to survive. I checked the closest one first, realizing that whoever had it had lost their job being stuck in the river, finding another one along the way, but there was no armor smith there, so that wasn't really super useful. Going back to the one that was all the way on the other side of the ocean, near the end of the night, not even worrying about the trade, going to sleep right away. On day 28, I got distracted from armor because they had a cleric, so I threw a bunch of emeralds at them, trading for redstone, and then for lapis, and then for glowstone trying to get them up to the trade that was the most important for this entire run. Here's the level that matters. Please give me pearls. Yes! Okay. This is actually really good, so. Eight. Twelve. That is exactly enough for a, per a portal. It is a massive, and I mean massive monetary investment, but it is worth it. I trapped that villager right away because a pearl trade is the only way to fully complete this challenge. And I have one on my very first cleric. That is huge. Spent a little bit more time working throughout the day using a water bucket to allow the cartographer to get into that house. Really Mojang, that is such a design flaw. Getting looting three. So that's pointless. <laughs> On day 29, someone finally claimed the blast furnace and they immediately offered iron helmets and leggings. Now I was poor from the pearl trades, but this was a worthwhile investment. I have pads. We're once again safe for YouTube. I made myself a quick snack of bread, which would be just enough to get me to cross the ocean, if only it were that easy. Sailing all the way back towards the desert village, depoting everything I had, and trading all the sticks to get myself back up to double digit emeralds. And that's where I called it a day in real life, coming back the next morning. I also just took a break from recording VO. It's funny how everything kind of lines up like that. But I started the day and this recording session with focusing on the economy. You're gonna see a lot of me climbing up, spiralizing up a spruce tree, and then twisting and turning and chopping it down. I can only make that look different so many times. While sticks is my primary economic source, I still wanna make sure I get the villager leveled up. They can also earn me emeralds if they do melon trades that will be extremely useful but a max tier trade for them is golden carrots, which would be an amazing food source. I dumped a ton of emeralds into Apple Futures right before the market was about to crash, getting a melon trade, which was exactly what I was hoping for. So it's time to level up and increase melon production significantly. You'll notice that I don't have these set up right, I'll notice that in about 10 days. Going into day 31, I'm back out into the ocean to the north of my village, heading out in another direction trying to find dogs. I found a lot of deserts. Another desert village, more cats hunting more rabbits, a huge mesa biome in the distance. This is an amazing looking space and makes me potentially want to revisit my desert 100 days. Maybe I make a new mod pack for that. Let me know if you want to see a remixed version. Okay, I know I can't use any of it. But I have to go look. I have to look. It's a present! 
Oh, that iron would be super useful. How about over here? Watch there be a god apple. Oh, there's diamonds! Nope, can't use it. Can't use it. Look at me being, obeying my rules with my fishing rod and my rabbit flesh. Nope, can't use it. That's such a bummer. But in general, I'm really appreciating using rivers more. It's making me slightly more excited for rafts in 1.20. Nothing else, it's just a visually cool thing. But I eventually found my way into a forest seeing some wolves in the distance, and I need them if I'm gonna progress and beat this game. Thankfully, there was a village immediately nearby, so I was able to put the golem to work, taking out skeletons that I had found, getting a bone, walking over to a wolf, and getting that new friend in one. And then it went horribly wrong. No, that was so much progress. Okay, I need to be able to heal, and there are more wolves. That is a lot of zombies. You, will you be my friend? Don't mind what happened to the- No, dang it. Okay, I gotta run. After that setback, I took the golem out of the core of town, just leading them around from mob to mob to mob, getting only two bones throughout all of the night, so I'm gonna be sticking around here a little bit longer. In the morning, I was checking around in the village, and they had nothing to offer. Okay. One... Two, three, they're not Starbucks. How many churches do you need? So I sailed back up to where the wolves would spawn and two bones was not enough this time around. I thought it was time to do another round of testing and tried to cast a portal with just a single bucket. And I, I know, I, I know, I'm not the speedrunner. This isn't my vibe. Usually you can dig to be able to prevent some of those problems, and I can do that in this challenge. I was able to successfully get a portal casted, but then I was reminded that I don't have a flint and steel, so even if I had it, I wouldn't be able to light it. But it's good to know I can do it. I took the golem back up onto the plateau overlooking the village, with their help taking out spiders and skeletons and using creepers to get myself a whole bunch of dirt. At one point in time, the golem got fully overwhelmed and just eliminated by a skeleton sniper. I ran back to the village from there, slept using the creepers to kill each other to get more dirt and a little bit of gunpowder and thought, you know what? I'm just gonna kidnap a dog <laughs> instead of trying to tame it first. Throwing it into a boat and sailing all the way back through multiple different areas, getting lost at one point in time and needing to use a lead to get the wolf over just a small little hump of land. I did pass by a pillager tower, which it's good to know where this one is. I don't really, need to do a raid. I can't really even beat a raid with the no kill part of the challenge, but it's good to know where I might need to get some stuff from here later. Using a combination of wolf on a lead and wolf in a boat, I was able to transport that thing all the way back to my home village. Oh, that took way too much effort. Okay. We need to get bones. We need to get bones. But the golem wasn't anywhere to be seen. So I tried to get the wild wolf to help with the fight and that was just a disaster. But it eventually did lead into day 34 where I found out where the golem was. They were stuck inside one of the area's stalls kind of bizarre looking things in the middle of town. So I used a little bit of dirt that I had and a lead on them, pillaring up to just yo-yo them up and out to allow them to be able to once again wander around the village, taking out the skeleton that was waiting in the water and, oh, I was afraid that they were gonna die there. Please? Please. Yes, we have a wolf. With the wolf situation now resolved, we can get back into our economy. Using the trees that were now all grown here because the chunks were loaded again, I was able to chop down another tree for another round of emeralds, did a little bit of curation on the farm, and then invested a stack of sand to prevent the water from running through the middle of the village. I'm starting to think that that water may be contributing to the golem or some villagers getting stuck, and the last thing I need is a progress setback of a villager or a golem dying when I don't need them to. While it was getting late into the night, I cooked up all of the mutton that the wild wolf had helped me collect. Having the golem help me with a little bit more hunting because I'm gonna need more bones. I need to do this entire thing over again. Day 35, I got a rabbit foot as a gift from my cat, which is a nice new item to have, but I was jumped by husks while I was attempting to start with my morning chores. Using the golem, I was able to collect the flesh and their bones too, one for the throne. 
all the emeralds going towards my overall economic domination of this planet. I invested a ton of this round of money making into cookies to be able to level up my farmer villager one more time, getting suspicious stew as a new thing that was available, but I didn't purchase any just yet. I instead sailed out, trying to retrace my steps without having to go through the desert area this time and just shortcut to my actual goal destination. I didn't initially find the same forest where all of those wolves had spawned, but I did find a portal and this one is actually completable. It did start to rain though, and that Enderman just jump scared me. Day 36 is the long and lonely trek through a whole bunch of rain trying to find a new best friend somewhere out in the woods. I am sad Keanu, wet and soggy, running through a taiga biome, but I eventually did find Find a few new wolf friends. Doggy, doggy, come here, doggy. You, doggy. Hello. Yes. Okay. Come on, doggy, doggy. Yes. Another doggy. Okay. Two doggies. Let's go <laughs> home. Let's go home. It's time to leave. It's time to get back to our to our base. This is gonna take forever. We are. So far away. I threw one of them in the boat with me and the other on a lead being drugged behind the boat. I do feel a little bit guilty about that one, but as I head across a sandbar, things, things got very intense. fight and I had somehow completed it without losing anyone that I noticed I had a potato in my inventory probably dropped from one of the zombies that is a pretty big find it was the morning of day 37 by the time I had actually made my way home and I'm using the rotten flesh from all of the husks that have been killed to breed up dogs I'm going to need an army I'm throwing all the emeralds I have at the toolsmith going down to about a third of what I had had previously because there's no way I'm buying bells and iron is just way too precious to be traded in. I did take one piece of that very precious iron to make myself a flint and steel, focusing on another round of the economics of focusing on another round of punch tree, punch cactus, make stick, trade stick for money. With the extra little bonus of buying dozens of stone tools that I'm hoping to deprecate just by throwing them on the ground but it is a very expensive investment to do so. The next morning, I'm still getting a little bit of additional truly passive income from the farmer, villager. The few seconds it takes to harvest wheat or a melon really makes sense. It was at this point that I realized that I wasn't getting as many melons as I thought, and after a quick Google, realized that they don't grow on sand. You explicitly need a block of dirt. Getting a full round of emeralds and getting my toolsmith upgraded. We can get a diamond hoe for one emerald. That is a waste, but it is gonna help us get them leveled up fast. After the second round of trading in the day, the toolsmith was about three quarters of the way to leveling up and I couldn't progress them any further. So I took out my frustration by torturing the chickens. Day 39, I received some string for the cat and realized I need to scale up my emerald production. The easiest way to do that would be a second Fletcher. Thankfully, my first can help me produce flint from the gravel that I have from creeper explosions. I'm able to put down a second table and double up on my emerald production from sticks each day. I also headed out in another random direction, trying to find lava a little bit closer to home. If I wanna go to the nether, I need to do so from here, or at least from somewhere closer to here. That portal that I had made previously, I couldn't tell you the coordinates if I tried. I used the two pieces of lava from over in the abandoned village, and that was all that I could see. I waited until night just to potentially catch a smallest glimmer of light somewhere in the desert from my lava pool. And the only thing I saw was my golem getting murked by a ton of skeletons and husks on the outskirts of town. The next day, I wasn't about to let that sacrifice go in vain, though, turning the leftover scraps from that golem into a pair of shears, which would allow me to get wool blocks, and that's another renewable block source. That's something I could use for building. 
I was able to get the toolsmith leveled up to their next trade, getting diamond shovels as the next possible thing that I could buy, and I'm going to stick with the hose to get them leveled up. From there, I headed south off to the Plains and Savannah area, seeing a much closer to home pillager tower and shearing all the sheep that I could find. Since it's completely non-damaging and they'll grow it back, it's perfectly valid for the challenge. I used a little bit of sandstone that I had in my inventory to be able to cast a portal a little bit more reliably, making sure to do it far enough away from the lava so that I wouldn't risk it. And before you ask, I checked with all of you on stream to see if this was a valid strategy and you all said yes. So that works for me. Whew, okay, this is potentially the scariest part of this entire thing. <laughs> it can all go horribly wrong right here. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> Oh, this is like the worst possible biome for us to be in. In the nether, I was toggling shaders on and off. For some reason, my shaders just really limit visibility. I spawned very low and in the middle of a crimson forest, which was kind of an awful place to potentially be, and I didn't have enough blocks. Now, I can't mine anything that I didn't make, so I have to travel through open nether. And unfortunately, every block that I have that's even somewhat renewable is flammable. So I headed back to the village, going into the day of life, the meaning of the universe and everything to get a whole bunch of wood, not converting all of it into sticks, even though I converted quite a decent amount of it into sticks. I still want emeralds at the end of the day, okay? I harvested all of the kelp so I could have a fuel source, setting that to cook, using another iron to make myself a new shield, as my previous one had been broken from some skeleton at some point in the past. I made myself a whole bunch of bread so I would have food, harvested all of the melons, and made myself a bed so I'd be able to roll the day over from anywhere and not having to find a village. I grabbed a wolf in the boat, accidentally turned on narrator. Narrator narrates all. Use mouse cursor or tab. Use mouse cursor or tab. Narrator, narrator. And took a quick nap in front of the infernal portal to darkness and eternal damnation, going into day 43, where it was time to really give this another shot. With a bunch of spruce planks in hand, and really hoping that they wouldn't catch fire, I was able to build up to that first immediate tier above the one that I had spawned on, which was right at the lava level. Now I don't have gold armor, so all piglins are hostile to me, so I'm just constantly using the whole look down and make a tower of blanks underneath you to avoid being stabbed by my piglin former brethren. I am getting a little bit better at the whole use blocks to avoid soul sand thing, so I mean, point in my favor. I continued past a bastion through multiple different areas of a crimson forest and eventually saw a little bit of nether brick off in the distance. The only problem was the amount of bridging I would need to do to get there and the lava that was in the way. This wasn't going to work. I think I got very lucky with the stronghold, stronghold fortress. I think I got very lucky with the fortress. I also, with how I saw the train in the other direction, I don't think I can get anywhere without mining. So this is the only one I've been able to get to in open nether, or the only one I'll be able to get to in open nether. Without digging a tunnel, there's no way I can get a dog to survive this trip. So I actually think the play might be to go over in the overworld, even though it's eight times the distance and try to just portal directly into the fortress. So let's try that. Funny enough, this is not the only time that I try to abuse portal mechanics to get somewhere that the game is preventing me from going. You will see that later and it is a treat, trust me. But I'm thinking it's about 200 blocks on either axis away from where I was, maybe a little bit further. So I should need to go to about 3,000, negative 3K on one of the axes. And that's gonna be a little bit of a hard challenge, but I'll have to figure it out. I couldn't even sleep. It was just into day 44 by the time I was back into the overworld. I grabbed the wolf in the boat, started heading north, sheared all of the sheep that I could, traded for all of the hoes that I could, grabbed myself a shovel, or three. It's not something that I'm gonna use a lot of, but it's still potentially useful, and the experience gains on the villager, really I can't pass up. Plus, with double the Fletchers now on the workforce and a ton of trees there, I'm making twice as many emeralds as I used to on any given day, and it's working in my favor. Give me the pickaxe. Oh, that's actually really good. Oh, but I'm, I'm short, hold on. I, I, 
Where do I find sticks? Silk Touch is huge. I just said so about 15 minutes ago in this recording. You probably heard that in like seven. Yes. I remember way too much. Diamond pickaxe acquired. Next morning, I had a feather from my cat and a ruling from the chat. Now, I spoke with a few of you in my live stream chat and you said that this was okay. Since I made the subsidian, I can break it. This is huge. That is three. We need 12, and then we can head to the place where we know the fortress is and hope that we spawn in a place that we can get the dogs to without dying. So despite getting a silk touch pickaxe, I for some reason was still defaulting to using an ax to harvest all of the melons. I'll do so for another couple days before something probably clicks that I'm messing up here. I was able to use a lot of bone meal on the potatoes to get that really going, trading with the farmer villager for more suspicious stews, and then dumping every penny that I had into golden carrots. This is expensive, but it's worth it. This is the best food in the game. There is nothing that can beat it, and now we finally have it. And now, we also need to figure out what these are. Weakness? So I chowed down on all of the suspicious stews, mainly to get more bowls. Again, I don't know what to do with bowls. Throwing all of the melons to just recoup myself back up off of zero because being completely broke is terrifying even in block game. I once again napped in front of the portal to the abyss. All right, and this is another thing that I talked with y'all that you all said that this would be okay. That if I just poured this over this, that would be fine because it wouldn't be obsidian unless I did something to it. But we're gonna, we're gonna be a little bit more uh, precise. There we go. And I, now there's no arguing that this is because I made it. Since I have the approval of my stream community, and by the way, if you wanna be able to vote on rules for my videos or anything else like this, you gotta join the streams. Make sure you come tune in every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's a lot of fun. But day 46 turned into obsidian and wool farming the game. So I'd be able to have all of the supplies I could need for later parts of this challenge. Once I had about two, two and a half portals worth of obsidian, I sailed north, getting back to the desert village, taking a quick nap and going into day 47, where I loaded a dog into a boat and started heading off to the coordinates where I was hoping the fortress would be located at. It was actually back in that area with the deserts and the mesa biome that I had gone to about 15 days earlier, heading off until I got to the exact coordinates on my F3 that I was thinking would potentially be it. I built myself the portal, thought maybe I should take a nap before going back to hell, lit it, and it's time to check my math. Oh, I did the math so perfectly. Oh, I did the math perfectly. Can we get a blaze rod? Oh my God, if we can get one, if we can get one, we can fire us. No, oh shoot, how would we get fire us? Okay. You're coming with me. <laughs> this is gonna be risky. I saw the, I saw the lead pop you on the other side. That's all the meat I have. Oh my goodness, you stay right there. You stay. Ooh. That's not bad. Nope, time to go. Uh, I'm gonna sacrifice so many wolves to get this challenge done. No, oh, no. So realizing that I'm gonna have to throw a lot of bones for the bone throne and blood for the blood god, I sailed all the way back to the desert village, getting there right about the time where mobs were at their peak, which was perfect for me, running around and following the iron golems for whatever rotten flesh they happen to just spontaneously find sitting somewhere on the ground. I also hugged a few explosive shrubs, getting some more sandstone and the occasional piece of gunpowder whenever two of them were just in a little bit too close proximity to each other. And all of that rotten flesh 
is being used to feed the dogs to make more dogs. Day 49, I'm watching Taskmaster while working on this project, so you don't have my live VO right away because I don't want to get copyright struck, but I'm saying to myself, I need a way to be able to transport more than two dogs at a time and wouldn't you know it. I was just hoping to find one of you. Okay, 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 okay. We need gunpowder. Okay, we need gunpowder. All right, here, here, you. So you can get the leads from Wandering Trader without killing them. Yes, I'm looking at you, my fellow YouTuber friends, by throwing the llamas into a boat, which snaps the lead right away. Using that, I was able to get two more leads, doubling the number of wolves that can come with me in each individual trip to hell, converting an entire tree from sticks to emeralds with one step in between, taking a little bit of that money over to the Wandering Trader to buy eight pieces of gunpowder. I also spent a another 10 on jungle sapling. Another tree variant, another type of wood, and another tree that goes big if you have four of them. So that's some variety in my life while I'm continuing to walk around while the husks get hunted. Day 50 is the halfway point on the challenge. And once again, I found a villager up on the roof of a building that they should have been on. And I need to convince them not to jump and kill themselves doubly so now because they have something that I really need. After baby proofing the village, doing a little bit of work on my economy, about now finally remembering that I should be using a silk touch pick to harvest all of the melons, I crafted up an additional shield, knowing my current one would not withstand fire for an extreme amount of time, grabbing the wolves that I can, getting jump scared by a puffer fish, and sleeping on an island on my way to the portal to hell. Day 51, I'm gonna be completely honest, I spent a good portion of this day Totally lost. I was in the mood of, I don't need to check my screenshots folder. I remember where I need to go. And I ended up sailing off in the wrong direction by about a thousand blocks on one axis. That required me to go up and over the mesa with the wolves following me. And just as the sun was starting to set, I saw the portal in the distance throwing the dogs off to hell, waiting until day 52 for me to go in and follow myself. I'm blocking off all of the walls to avoid wither skeleton blaze to hit my shield with a fireball, which will trigger all of my dogs. They count as player kills if they get it, but the statistics don't go up, and I'm just shoving rotten flesh into them to keep them alive and healed. It took a few kills before I got my first blaze rod, which means that finding the stronghold is possible, and that is a huge improvement. I did start losing some dogs though. There were sacrifices that needed to be made. I got three blaze rods, which felt pretty good before I ran out of rotten flesh. And I'm thinking, you know what? I can just protect all of us with fire res. So I sicked all of my wolves on the slime, getting a magma creep, which is good to have until I remembered it's gonna be impossible to brew potions because I can't get nether wart. I took the survivors from that fiasco, brought them back over to the overworld and headed sailing back towards home using torches to mark all the small little islands in between those two places so I have a clear path and, you know, direction so I don't get lost again. Using the night to farm resources from mobs and explosions, I went into day 53, grabbing a whole bunch more wolves and sailing back. This time, actually having a route and not getting lost, making my way to the portal at about the halfway mark of the day, getting all the wolves through and back to the nether. They immediately all jumped on a wither skeleton, which thankfully went well, and then off to fight more blazes. And yeah, I'm sacrificing wolves to the fire, losing all of them, but having all the blaze rods I need to find a stronghold. I took a quick nap in the lake before sailing back home on day 54, harvesting up all of the melons, all of the seeds, teaching the chickens a lesson, and doing a little bit of work with wood to get my emerald total a little bit higher. Day 55, the cat brought me chicken? I didn't know it could do that. I crafted up all of the eyes, and let's go. All right. Let's see where this goes. Okay. It's in the water. Please let it, if it's water accessible, it's really the only way we can make this work. I started sailing off and it started raining, which is ominous and atmospheric and ooh, the tension. I love how this happens sometimes. I ended up on a small little sandbar throwing the eyes and I'm starting to learn a little bit about speedrunning for another video I will do soon and the angle made me think that it was relatively close. So I went just two chunks over through an eye and it went down, which is great. A water accessible stronghold is really the only way I can get into that place. There's no other way for me to break blocks or do anything else to be able to mine my way down. So I checked all the caves in this area, everything I could find in close proximity, and then moving out like a hundred blocks or so and finding caves, but with no indication whether or not they double back and reach me. This 
this is a problem. If I need to break blocks to get to the stronghold, then I can't get there. And I just need to go find another one potentially. I did have a thought though. Let's try to use a portal to get underground. If you watched any of my videos, you know whenever I make a portal in the nether, I end up like deep in the deep slate, completely underground, no access to the surface. Maybe for once I could use that in my favor. So I have a plan. I'm gonna need a whole bunch more obsidian, but before doing that, I also just kinda of wanna to get to a better economic state. I combined a bunch of jungle saplings to get a big jungle tree, ending up with vines as a new item, which could definitely come in handy as a ladder alternative. I traded in all of the melons sailed south to where that lava pool is, and then just made obsidian all the way into day 57. I spent about a half an hour just making obsidian. I made a portal here at the village going through ending up in the soul sand valley. I could see my spruce planks in the distance so I was relatively close to my other portal. The only problem is there's a skeleton here and I can't kill anything and it followed me through the portal and I only have three hearts. The next morning I'm back to the nether using a bunch of jungle planks to bridge my way through having to run over the lava pits of a bastion trying to head over to where the coordinates of the stronghold would be. At one point in time I was cornered by piglin so I had to turn back and my bridge had burned away. This is a bit of a problem. I used a bit of obsidian to prevent the lava from catching it, heading back over to my village to grab a little bit of backup. First the trades, then the wolves, then back into hell with a few close calls. But now, once the piglins bought me, the wolf jumps into action, helping me eliminate the threat, eventually nabbing me a gold sword, which is a single gold nugget. Inefficient, but I guess I could get to words, maybe a piece of gold armor eventually. That is until one of my wolves just got yeeted by a hoglin and fell. All right, I'm gonna have to just leg it. I ran to on top of one of the crimson forest trees, as close as I could get. I was about 20 blocks off from the exact coordinates I was hoping for, but maybe this would be good enough. Every time I ever make a portal in the nether, it always puts me in a cave. So I came to what is almost exactly the coordinates of what that stronghold should be, and I'm really hoping that it puts me into a cave, and even better if it puts me into the stronghold. And if so, then we have a path. A very dangerous path, but a path, so... Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Welp, that was a failure. I spent a little bit of time the next morning demolishing that portal so I could save all of the obsidian. I don't want it to go to waste. Heading back home and doing a little bit of gardening and just trying to think what I'm going to do next. The fact that I spawned above water floating in the air. The antithesis of what I was hoping for just makes me think that that is karma just laughing at me. Something is gonna need to happen for me to be able to actually do this challenge without breaking a block and I don't have a clear idea of what it's gonna be. But before I search for another stronghold, I'm gonna need better armor. There's bound to be a lot of mobs and I'm gonna have a lot of incoming damage. Making myself more resilient would be key. As I headed south to go towards the Savannah Village with all of my emeralds in pocket, yeah, I was visited by a pink sheep. Hello friend, come with me. <laughs> we will speak no more of this, it just happened. <laughs> Again, every time, without fail, every time. Hold on. That's going on Discord. Y'all will not believe how much I just, I get excited about this. I know it's the smallest thing. It is the smallest thing, but it just makes me feel somewhere that the universe is saying, yes, you can do this. And given the fact that I had just come off of a failure with a portal, that felt wonderful. The next day, I went off to the Savannah Village, buying a few extra pearls, just as kersplat insurance, so I wouldn't fall and die. Grabbing some more iron armor, first a helmet, and then buying a whole bunch more helmets that I could smelt down into nuggets, getting the armorer leveled up for chainmail boots, which would be nice. I boxed them in with a piece of obsidian, grabbed the sheep back into the boat, spent the rest of the day sailing back towards the desert village, 
because I'm going to need to do a lot of revenue generation if we're going to be able to buy all of that armor and then the diamond armor in the future. With the sheep safely penned up on day 61, it's off to work. Day 62, I started the day by harvesting the crops and smelting down all of the helmets and the gold sword into nugget form so they would potentially be useful, craftable into ingots at some point in the future. From there, I spent a good chunk of time converting trees into money. The environment doesn't need oxygen, it's gonna be totally fine. At this point, the potato crops have yielded enough that that one side of the farm is fully populated, and that's a good place to start, except I need another farmer who will actually accept potatoes, but I'm building stock right now. That went into day 63, where I finished up this round of economics getting to 66 emeralds which feels just kind of perfect to head back to hell with a few more wolves with the hope of getting enough blaze rods to be able to get myself to a new stronghold hopefully one that is actually accessible from water one of my wolves fell to their death almost immediately once i was in the nether though as i was on my way over to the blaze spawner i got a little bit of a surprise and an extra gift from my wolf friends i can't believe i got a wither skull I can't believe I got a- I came here for blaze rods and I got a wither skeleton skull. With the help of a few more four-legged sacrifices, I was able to get three more blaze rods, which should be enough to help me find another stronghold as long as every single one of the eyes doesn't break. And after a quick nap on the beach, I said goodbye. You two stay here and guard the portal for forever, and I will never be back. Bye. I sailed back towards the village, planted the wither skull on the side of a house for memes. I can't do anything with it. And did a little bit more economy, getting myself up to 70 emeralds. That feels like a good spot and potentially enough to be able to afford diamond armor from the armor in the Savannah village. But I wanted to make sure that I'd have enough. So day 65 was another grind on the economics of this world. I'm harvesting all of the trees, throwing those at the Fletchers, buying axes from the toolsmith, using that to make more sticks, which makes more emeralds. I did buy a power two bow and then forgot that I can't actually shoot a mob and end crystals die in one shot so that doesn't matter. Ending the day with 100 emeralds exactly. The richest I had been yet in this world and that felt pretty good. On day 66, I want to build myself an insurance policy. Hopefully, I can get myself into a stronghold with a few blocks of TNT and a few redstone torches. That would let me break a couple blocks. They wouldn't exactly count as broken by me. I decided to travel through the nether, thinking this would be the fastest way, running off to the portal by the plains village, harvesting all of the wool and sailing throughout the whole day over to the Savannah village, some several thousand blocks away, where on day 67, I'm throwing all of those 100 emeralds at this armorer. First in chainmail boots and then in shields, which were thankfully cheap and provided a decent bit of experience. Then diamond pants and diamond boots, getting me halfway towards my goal of full top tier armor. The expert level trade was a diamond helmet, so I'm three quarters of the way there. And the master level trade was just out of my reach. I threw another eye and I'll explain in game. Okay. Okay, so this is gonna sound weird. Go with me for a second. If there's a stronghold behind me, and we know where the stronghold is to the north, I'd be willing to bet that this is all land. Because, well, it looks like land. And we cannot get into a stronghold that is underground because we can't dig. So, I'm going to go for a little while. Like, vaguely that way i'm gonna hope beyond hope somewhere in the ocean is a stronghold and that stronghold is accessible from the surface hoping that i had identified two of the three interior triangle strongholds i thought i would sail for number three it was probably directly south of what i now knew was the northern of the three and my hope because this was a massive ocean area, is that it would be located somewhere underneath the water that I could easily access. I followed eyes for all of night 67 into a portion of day 68, where I eventually had one eye head southward. Marking that chunk, it's time to start searching for a cave. I'd turn off shaders so I could see a little bit easier underwater, going through any tunnel using a bucket to just make a little air pocket because that's how breathing works. I found my way into geodes and caves, a massive underwater area. Like, look at this cave, it is huge. And if I could build in here, I could probably make something that looks decently cool, but no stronghold. There are a few points where I heard mobs underneath me, but nothing that tells me this is the place where I should spend one of my few few precious blocks of TNT. 
Then I swam through a small cracked cave, which opened up to an open air cave at the bottom and struck gold. Oh, nope, 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 gotta run, gotta run. Nope, gotta run. Oh, there's a slime right there. Oh! That's like a perfect box, too. I think that's how the stronghold generates. I'd be willing to bet that that's it. I don't know about you. I think, I think I'm standing on it. Oh, no, gotta run. Oh, I'm absolutely standing on it. Look at this box right here. This is another room. <gasps> yes, yes. Oh, there's the pearl I need, but I gotta go buy it. Okay, let's find the portal room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That is the best stronghold navigation of my entire life. We could send it. In this moment, we could go to the end. We could complete this challenge right now. But, like I said, I want to do it in full diamond armor. Wanting to do this right, wanting to complete this challenge, I need to get into full diamond before I take on the dragon. It would be really nice to kill the dragon on day 69. And believe me, I was celebrating. It could be done! <laughs> Oh my god, it can be done! Okay, okay, okay. We need to do the final work, and we need to get ready, and we need to kill this drag- We're not gonna make it to day 100, we're gonna complete this challenge right before that. But we have to do this properly if we're going to do it at all. I demolished the old pillar, sailed all the way back towards the desert village, sleeping along the way, because it is a multi-day journey by boat on the rivers. And from there, I'm in economics mode. I need at least 50 emeralds, to be able to fully afford everything that I want for the fight, but I want to go a little bit further. I ended the day on about 40, going into day 71, where I continued on the economic grind. Sticks, melons, tree, stick, melon, tree, stick, melon, tree. I want to actually kill this dragon with 100 emeralds in my inventory. That feels oddly poetic for a 100 day challenge. I'm not going to wait until day 100 either. I have a plan for what will happen after the dragon has fallen. Just you wait. But near the end of the day, I fully committed, destroying all of the wheat and planting exclusively potatoes. Going into day 72, where I have 94 emeralds in my pocket, and this is looking like it's going to be possible. 103. Just because we can. Wait, hold on. 105 emeralds! We have what we need. Well, wait, oh wait, no. Now if we go buy the thing for 30, we'll have under 100. We need 130. We need 130 exactly. I still had a little bit more grinding to do, but now that energy was bubbling up inside me, I was anxious. I really wanted to do this. Every tree seemed to chop faster. Every trade that much more rewarding. There we go. 137 emeralds, which means after we buy the diamond chest plates, We'll still have over a hundred and we're gonna kill the dragon with a hundred emeralds in our pocket. The next morning, I invested a few of those emeralds back into arrows and saw a new wandering trader had wandered their way into the village and they were selling gunpowder, which I wanted, and dripstone, another new item. And that is pretty huge. With that, I can make farmable lava, but we'll get to that later. That cut into my reserves just a little bit, but I still felt confident about what we were gonna do. Now you might be thinking, if I'm gonna go to the end, it is extremely risky to be there since I can't kill anything. One look at an enderman and it is over. And you're right. So we need to get a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. But I can't break blocks and I've only found one way to do it. And that is to travel through time. I'm gonna make my game think it's Halloween. One quick change of window setting can dig later. And just like that, We've traveled through time. Now let's get a pumpkin. 
So while I waited for it to become night, I harvested all of the potatoes, did a little bit more trading just to build a buffer in emeralds. I want to kill with as much wealth in my pocket as possible, and then looked around for a prospective mob to drop me their gourd-based armor. Pumpkins only spawn on mobs on Halloween night, and it's based off of your PC's local time. And they have a 1-3% to chance of dropping that pumpkin when they're killed. Or at least I thought they did. We'll get to that later. I trapped a husk in a boat at the end of night 73, going into day 74 thinking if I made an iron helmet, which was a huge investment of iron ingots, they would drop the pumpkin and put the helmet on. And they did put the helmet on, but they never dropped the pumpkin. And here's where I found out they only drop the pumpkin if you kill them with looting. And I can't do that. One more quick jump back into the future and we're back on the melon ground while I'm trying to figure out another way that I can make myself a pumpkin. I headed south towards my lava pool using a little bit of it on the lake to make a few blocks of smooth stone, breaking that with a wooden pickaxe that I just made for trash to get just enough cobblestone that I could head back to the desert village and unlock a piston, a brand new item for me. From here, I headed south, sailing along to the Savannah Pillager Tower that was relatively close and hoping that they had a few target dummies sitting outside. Thankfully, with a little bit of luck, they had two with jack-o'-lanterns right on them. I used the piston to push one of them, causing the pumpkin to break, dropping as an item that I was able to pick up, leaving the piston behind, thinking it a fair trade, sleeping in the Savannah Village, and then heading south. I have everything I need. That pumpkin was the final key but there's one stop left. Huh? The price went up? Huh. I'm only gonna have 99 emeralds. I got 99 emeralds, but the dragon ain't one. Knowing now that I'm not gonna be able to kill the dragon with 100 emeralds in my inventory, I figured I'd buy myself a little bit of insurance if I happen to get yeeted up into the sky. And when I put the chest plate on, it felt good. Full diamond, and we've started with nothing, and we broke no blocks that we were not responsible for. We're practically in adventure mode, and we're gonna kill the dragon without killing the dragon. That tab will remain inactive. Now fully equipped, fully stacked, having everything I needed to end this challenge without a single direct mob kill. I sailed off towards the stronghold, used the water to get over towards the portal, standing in the middle of it and getting ready for a fight. I cannot believe we're about to do this. And we got two eyes. I never get eyes in my portals. With the portal active, I threw the pumpkin on my head and, um... Oh. Hold up, that's gonna be awful for you all to watch. One quick resource pack installation later and this video is a whole lot more viewable. I used a bow and arrow to knock out all of the crystals, the dragon circling overhead. I need to be extremely careful here. If I shoot the dragon even once, if I hit it at all, I will get credit for the kill, invalidating the entire challenge. So it's it very opposite or counterintuitive of how you normally fight this thing. And it was a fresh change of pace. Once all of the crystals were down and I was back on terra firma, moon firma, end firma, I crafted a whole bunch of beds. And I mean like an inventory's worth of beds. Messing up the one cycle on the first attempt, the bed just instantly disappearing. So instead, I threw down a block of TNT and a single torch, running back while the dragon took their first bit of damage. According to the game, all I did was place two blocks. I am off scot-free and that doesn't count as damage from me. If it were a button, that would have been a different story. Proving that I might not exactly be ready for speed running yet, I wasted another six or seven beds to get the dragon to only half health. Maybe I do a speedrunning video. Let me know in the comments. Throwing down another block of TNT by the dragon's face, letting that light from the fire from the bed explosions to chunk the dragon just under half. Another one shortly after that, and there are 25%. And with my final block of TNT, they're one bed explosion away for death. And I took the risk. I didn't want to wait for the next perch, so I decided to shoot my shot. Yes! I've done it!
I've beaten this game <laughs> in the most ridiculous way yet. All the beds. <laughs> but check it out. Mobs. I can't even click it. Back into the overworld, I sailed back north, returning to my village a victor with a chest full of beds to show that I had tried. And that's it. That's the video, right? It's only day 75. We ended a little bit early, but actually, you know what? I have a little bit of an idea. Now, I don't think we'll actually be able to get a beacon block unless we're allowed to kill stuff, but um, what if we got the emeralds for it? Yeah, let's do that. So uh, let's get a full emerald beacon before 100 days is up. The thing is, I can't just hoard emeralds. I need to increase overall production if I'm going to be able to actually hit that target. So I can't just harvest trees. I need to be able to move faster. I made another smithing table going in the next day waiting for a villager to bind to it. And this is where I'm gonna spend a significant amount of emeralds, getting them leveled up. I'm hoping for a diamond axe, specifically one with an efficiency enchantment. Even just a diamond axe alone would be double the speed of the stone axes that I have to work with right now. And it is punishing to flip flop between this and the hardcore world. The difference of max tools versus starter gear is just immediately visible. And if I'm investing in the infrastructure of the village, that includes more villagers, throwing down more beds so more villagers can spawn via breeding, breeding up the wolves to breed up more of an army to protect me and this town and going out in the evenings using creepers to blow up for dirt. Ending up with a little bit of oak wood, which will be nice for an accent if I actually choose to build something. I'm gonna need all of this dirt so I can plant additional trees. So I'm not just waiting on one to grow. Minimizing downtime is extremely important and a few pigs will be sacrificed along the way, bringing pork chops as a brand new item. On the morning of day 80, I am gonna try to clean up some of the creeper explosions around the village though. I converted some of my sand into sandstone, halfway covering this crater and making a platform in the water to scale up on melon production. As that was happening, we had a new visitor. Oh, hello. Please say something good. Oh, that is so much. Yes. Yes, we will buy that. If only you sold sugarcane, you'd be perfect. Mangrove wood would be really nice. I haven't built with it much and having such a limited block palette is making me really interested to try to include it into a base somehow. I planted and bone mealed as many melon seeds as I could to just have production start scaling up, buying a mangrove propagule and getting that planted. Going into day 81, I can finally trade in all of my potatoes to get a few more emeralds here and there, using a lot of that into pickaxes, which I set on fire, along with the toolsmith accidentally when I'm not careful. Thankfully, they survived and they're up to the diamond hoe level, which means I can get them leveled up for a little bit cheaper. Using those hoes to break all of the mangrove leaves and get mangrove wood, another new item for my build palette. I'm rushing to harvest all of the trees, harvesting all of the cactus that I had planted and making myself a composter, which would allow me to turn that into more bone meal. And the benefit is it gets me another farmer villager the next day. I traded in all the melons and the sticks, crafting up my first six blocks of emeralds. And I'm finally off the mark when it comes to making this beacon, 18 days to go. Another wandering trader just spawned, giving me moss, which, could be potentially really huge in being able to ramp things up. I went to the toolsmith, grabbed a couple more diamond hose, and crossed my fingers, hoping for a diamond axe. I will take that. No more stone axes. That was potentially not worth the investment, but you never know. It's definitely faster. Now finally being able to use a quality tool to harvest all of these trees. Things are going faster. The investments are starting to pay dividends and with double fletchers and trees growing as fast as I can, the occasional iron ingot left from somebody dying on one of my campfires in the evenings, we're making progress in our overall production. All right, we've been at the beacon challenge for about five days now and we've made zero progress towards it, which is probably not a good sign, but I did spend all of day 83, laser focus on economics, which is how I noticed that one of my villagers had disappeared. One of my Fletchers was just gone. I went over to the nether, finding a wolf and an iron golem, but it was in the hole that I had halfway patched that my Fletcher and the nitwit had gotten stuck in conversation. 
I left the Fletcher out, buried the nitwit never to be heard from again, and traded with them in the evening going into day 84 where I saw an iron golem kill an enderman. I didn't even know that that was a thing that could happen. All right, now we're actually off the mark. Five emerald blocks out of my inventory, out into the world. Another 13 crafted immediately after. I am broke. I have no emeralds to my name, but I don't really have anything I need to spend money on anymore. I wanna get this beacon complete. And I finally have the overall footprint of the beacon fully mocked out in the village. It's gonna be a little out of place, but it's gonna look pretty cool if I can actually pull this off. The next morning, I did another round of converting all of the wood into emeralds, throwing another block down and using a few of the emeralds to figure out what sus stews my farmer villagers would sell me. There was night vision and weakness. They both were a little weird for the desert. Two more blocks for the emerald pile, and I grabbed all of my seeds that I had accumulated through the last 85 days, dumping them all into the composter, trying to get more bone meal so I could get more trees and also more dirt. You'll be surprised how that works. Day 86, and I'll explain it to you. I went out into the desert to convert a little bit of sand into moss with my bone meal, thinking that maybe I could get dirt from that, and except it doesn't convert sand. Yeah, I'm silly, it doesn't convert sand, it converts dirt. And it has these azalea bushes, which are a nice new item, but can also help us get dirt. It makes rooted dirt underneath and oak wood, so we have more colors for accents. I collected up all of the moss that had spawned from the singular block that I had bone mealed, and then spent a little bit of time just bone mealing individual azalea bushes to get more rooted dirt. From there, I headed home, collected all of the melons that I could see, and converted the rooted dirt into regular dirt, getting some hanging roots as a new item. From there, I combined the dirt with gravel to get coarse dirt, which you can then hoe back into regular dirt, basically getting a two to one return on your investment. So from one block of moss and a little bit of gravel, I had made 15 blocks of dirt. Chief would be proud, and it was allowing me to expand my melon platform to make a few more emeralds each day. I planted all of those melons on day 87, and those melons growing is my primary passive income. One more block for the beacon, we're at 22 as I'm harvesting trees, and this helps to add more blocks to the overall progress, but it's active time that I need to spend. We ended the day with 25 blocks, and we are just frankly behind pace. We need to scale up even further. So I planted down all of the trees that I could, making a barrel and a few other items, because if we're not gonna complete this beacon, I'm ending this world with something worth leaving behind. The next morning, I smelted up a little bit of the cobblestone that I had left into smooth stone, making myself a stone cutter and popping down some different trees. I'm gonna build myself a little house that will contain everything that I'm leaving behind in this world, a monument to the fact of our scrappy beginnings and everything we had done. I'm using jungle wood for the walls, stripped mangrove as a little accent, and sandstone as the overall base, making sure to consistently harvest all of the big trees whenever they grow so we can make a little bit of money here and there. The melons, I'll usually harvest each night after they grow consistently throughout the day, and I spend some time getting some more mangrove wood to be able to expand the house a little bit further. Day 89, after my morning round of trading from the resources I had collected the last night, that's three more blocks of emeralds into the beacon, and I don't know, it could go either way right now. I harvested and traded in all of the potatoes, and while waiting for crops and trees to grow, I'm building out my house. The mangrove is a great accent. It's a pop of color in this sea of endless sand, but with all the blocks put together, the limited things that I can actually work with, it's a little weird, a little disorienting. I traded in all of the emeralds that I had, adding another four blocks to the beacon. We're at half a stack of blocks when we end this day, harvesting melons through the morning into day 90, where I'm just trying, throwing down all of the jungle wood that I can using fences for a lot of the windows, since I can't really make glass. Trading in all of the emeralds that I can, and while I'm waiting for the trees to grow, I just, I can't take it. I hate this house design. We're gonna start over. I spent a little bit of time demolishing the entire thing. Instead, deciding to build a little bit of what would look like a watchtower or a fortress, somewhere where I could oversee my subjects in the Emerald Base Village, and this is already starting to feel a little bit better. As I was working on all of the details though, a witch wandered into town, which was a bit of a problem. Myself and all of my wolves were completely poisoned. Me sitting at half a heart in the middle of this town, surrounded by all of my wolves, 
but they're also on the brink of death as well. I harvested all of the melons once I could finally recover. And then I ran out later in the evening using creepers to blow up sand, which I can convert into sandstone. It's a horrible conversion rate, but it's the only way I can get more blocks to actually complete the tower. Day 91, I'm using all of the different variants of sandstone and a little bit of sand as well to form a natural gradient, making a spruce roof and the different jungle logs, making a spruce roof using jungle fences for all of the windows and accents and mangrove for the entrance so it has that pop of color. After not being able to build in this world for so long, I kind of got lost in my mindset, trying to find accents and details, enjoying the challenge of having so few blocks to work with that I kind of let the economic portion of the challenge fall off the wayside for just one day. By the time that it was approaching the evening and I remembered what I actually had to do to complete this, I only got one round of trading with all of the villagers, not even spending the time to convert it into blocks and throw it on the beacon. Instead, dead, I had to deal with a husk attack in the middle of the night and the only iron golem left was once again trapped inside that stall in the middle. I placed down the bed that I've been carrying with me since day 45 in the tower, slept, and the next morning realized I need to get that golem out of there. So I leaded them up and out, placing melons to form a roof on that stall. That's one emerald sitting right there. If I miss it by one, that's why. I traded the rest of my stock into all of the villagers, ending up with a total of five additional blocks onto the beacon. From there, I harvested all of the crops. Almost all of them were at full growth and my new farmer villager collected potatoes. How perfect. One more emerald for the beacon and I'm harvesting all of the mangrove wood using fence posts to hold the roof of the whole thing up and using the roots as a thatch area. You can still see the sun, see the sky, but it provides shade. It's a pergola kind of cover that you can't really build in Minecraft any other way. I did end the night by planting more mangrove propagules, thinking that maybe we just make the entire bay look a little bit more intentional, running around to get a little bit more sand to be able to complete this tower fully. Day 93 and I need to complete this roof and this tower so that I can focus on the economics and try to really bring this one home on a W. With all of the blocks that I can manage put into place, the thing is fully constructed. And honestly, for the restrictions that I had on myself, the fact that all of these blocks came from one emerald, that feels really good. It feels a little bit more of a challenge to build in this way. Plus, I have the meaning of life's worth of blocks on the beacon, and maybe that's the true lesson to learn along this way. The other lesson being that wolves absolutely kill husks, but you need to make sure that they don't die after that. I threw two more blocks onto the beacon late into the evening, crafting up over a full stack of torches and deciding it was finally time to make the village just a little bit safer. We still need mobs, but we want them a little further away. Six days to go, and I'm adding a little bit of greenery to the tower to make it look like an oasis or something that just is taken a little bit more care of, not abandoned next to this very strange looking village. I took all of the wool and the few different dyes that I could get my hands on to make a few different colored banners. Harkening back to my Game of Thrones video, I went with a blue and white color scheme, which I think contrasts the rest of the desert pretty well. I'm throwing potatoes at my rookie villager to get them leveled up, harvesting all of the trees in my spiralized pattern. I'm probably gonna break this axe before the 100 days is over. No one breaking and no mending means these tools don't last as long as you would think they do. With 48 blocks of emeralds, I'm approaching the point where I can complete the bottom level, and I only have six days to do everything else. Thankfully, it's the biggest. Maybe this is still possible. Five days to go, and we're gonna see if it is. I started by planting a few more mangrove trees to really commit to the bay, tortured the chickens for a little while to make sure they remember their place, and headed back over to the savanna area to get a little bit more dirt from my azalea trees. More moss is definitely great. More oak wood definitely comes in handy. Torturing the chickens makes me feel like I have some purpose in my life remaining. I converted all of that to dirt, and then remembered I can plant on top of moss blocks. Well, okay, I didn't need to do any of that conversion. <laughs> I threw another four blocks of emeralds down onto the tower, getting myself... Hey Siri, what's 9 times 52? 
Nine times 52 is 468. Being just short of 500 emeralds overall committed to this project, we're about a third of the way there. Instead of building out from the center, I made it an overall square so we can have a better idea of our progress, putting all the dirt down and unleashing the dogs of war as zombies continued to attack throughout the night. Once we were safe and the sun was starting to rise, I made a few item frames as a brand new item, throwing up a couple key items from my history, including an emerald, so we all know that this is the house that capitalism built. With that, I harvested melons and cacti going into day 96, where I replanted the cactus fields and threw everything I could in for more bone meal. With that, I was able to complete another row of the melon farm so that production is now 50% higher, throwing all the sticks that I can, collecting more wood, which would turn into more sticks, which would turn into more emeralds, which turns into another four blocks for the beacon. With the with the melons turned in, that's 57 blocks overall, and with potatoes turned in and a little bit more trading, we're at 59. I was very economically focused. I didn't really complete any building projects on day 96, but I did get two full trading cycles in, getting us to 60 emerald blocks, which is 540 emeralds so far. And we're in the home stretch. I've done the math. If I don't miss a single trade, if I harvest every single block, and if I get another Fletcher villager somehow, I can maybe make it. It's going to be very, very close, and it counts on the melons and when they grow. I traded everything I could in, getting up to 62 blocks, and then remembering I can just use the moss to make a few more big spruce trees. It would actually convert the moss into dirt, and that's something I didn't know. I'm learning something this late into the challenge. With all of those sticks traded in, it's four more blocks, basically four blocks per trading cycle, ending up with 66 emerald blocks on the bottom of it. And, and as I ate my pies and looked out over my dog army, I'm starting to get a little bit wistful. This world has been an interesting challenge, a different rule set that I've placed on myself that I don't normally do. When I do these 100 days, I usually know what they're gonna feel like going into them. I have an idea. I have a mod pack or some new challenge, some twist. This one kinda came out of left field. It felt like something completely fresh and new and it made me look at the game with a different eye. Every item was precious. Every small bit of forward progress, a massive undertaking. I remembered back to when it was day 20 and I had a furnace and I was excited about that. And now I'm in full diamond armor, full diamond tools, and I'm trying to rush towards a beacon, something that most people think is an end game accomplishment. I ended the day with 76 emerald blocks set out into the world, more wealth than I had acquired in the entirety of this 100 days combined. And while it fell short of what I wanted originally, it still felt like an amazing accomplishment. And as I walked out into my town on the morning of day 99, my final day in this world, I had an idea. I'm sitting here thinking maybe a beacon was a little bit too presumptuous. So... With our objectives somewhat changed and our criteria for success modified, we traded one green block for another. These melons Realistically, even though I made far more from stick trades, these melons were the true passive income that helped me really flourish and accomplish something in this world. So it feels only right having the beacon be melon cord. And almost as if it was meant to be, it worked out perfectly. Just enough blocks of emeralds that they're visible from the outside, and just enough melon that the entire thing is solid. I took this cursed beacon, throwing the wither skull down on top of it, completing what was a interesting take on the overall goal of the challenge. From there, I breeded up all my wolves, allowing them to roam free to defend the village, throwing all of my items into the chests that waited here, smelting up one bit of stone to craft myself up an armor stand, my final new item in the game, and throwing my diamond armor to rest in the tower. Armed with just one emerald in my inventory, leaving this world hopefully better off than I had found it, I headed out of the village, walking off into the desert towards my next adventure. Thanks for everything, village. Good luck with the new economy. There's about to be a market crash once you all realize the pile of money sitting in the middle of the town. There's one thing I desperately wanted to know, though. If we had been able to break just one block. 
Oh no! I knew something green would be the death of me in the end. I hope you all enjoyed the video. The names on screen are my amazing patrons. If you wanna join them in helping support me make amazing new content, check out the link down in the pinned comment. Let me know what you thought. Take care of yourselves. Be good to each other. Bye.